Welcome to my video lecture based on numerical sound, molar test and block paper test of single phase induction method. In our previous lecture, we have heard about molar test and block paper test and how the parameters can be measured by using this test. And various parameters we have calculated using molar test and block paper test separately. And if we have any parameters related at no load condition and block paper test condition, in both cases we have determined different kinds of equivalent circuit parameters. Now, by using those parameters and with the help of no load test and block paper test readings, we can solve different kinds of numerical problems also. In this lecture, we will see how to solve the numerical problems related to node-load test and block loaded test of single phase induction motor. These problems can be similar like single phase induction motor, three phase induction motor or transformer related problems are similar like no-load test and block loaded test related problems of single phase induction motor. So, myself, Kundun Banerjee, Assistant Professor of Electrical Engineering Department, Dr. Shubhi Chaudhary, Degree Engineering College. Today, I will elaborate the example of molar test and doctor test numerical problem. So, first, here we will concentrate on one problem. I have taken this problem from Aspa Fusion Book of Electrical Engineer. You can also practice different kinds of problems related to single cell induction motor from books of Jenny Gupta or Nagra Kukari of electrical machines. So let us concentrate on this problem that uh, equipment to hold single phase induction motor gives the following test results. In block motor test, we are getting that 124, 9.3 gram and 460 watt. That means the motor rated current is 9.6 ampere. Okay. In molar test, we are getting the result that is 224, 4.6 ampere and 125 watt. That means the rated voltage of this induction motor is 220 volt. And we can also determine two things that is 460 watt basically is the copper loss of single phase induction motor and 125 watt. That is basically the RL loss of single phase induction motor. Here the stator winding resistance is given that is 1.5 ohm and during the block footed test the circuit winding is kept open and determine the equivalent circuit parameters and also find the core loss, friction and windage loss. So in this problem the various parameters have been given from both meter, ammeter and watt meter readings and also the stator winding resistance value is given and it has been also mentioned that during block meter test the starting winding is open that means the auxiliary winding is kept open during this block meter test. Now we have to determine the equivalent circuit parameters based on these readings we have get from block meter test and mono test. So the problem will be solved like same way as we have calculated the equivalent circuit parameters as per our previous lecture. We have solved different kinds of equivalent resistors, reactions and impedances from block motor test and we have calculated no load reactions, no load resistance, power factor, all these parameters from no load test. So similar way we will calculate this one and we will see the results. So first we will start our calculation with block rotor test. So in block rotor test the value is given that is voltage at short circuit that is 120 volt. That means at block rotor test the voltage gives the reading as 120 volt. ISC equals to 9.6 ampere. That means the short circuit current that is 9.6 ampere. And PSC equals to 460 watt. That means the power 
output we are getting from what we have at the product is condition that is 461. So from volt meter reading and ammeter reading by using Ohm's law we can get the value of equivalent circuit impedance, equivalent impedance that is ZE. This is the equivalent impedance of single phase induction motor which is VSC by ISC and we are getting that equivalent impedance value is 12.5 ohm. Now equivalent resistance we can calculate from using the formula of power that is P equals to I square R. From there we can calculate the equivalent resistance value that is PSC divided by ISC square. Now we are putting the reading of watt meter and ammeter. Watt meter reading that is 460 and ammeter reading that is 9.6. We are getting that the equivalent resistance value is 4.99 ohm. Now we will put this equivalent resistance value and equivalent impedance value to calculate the equivalent reactance value that is Xe and here Xe equals to root over J D square minus R square which is root over 12.5 square and 4.99 square which is equals to 11.46 ohm. So our equivalent reactance is 11.46 ohm. Now we will again calculate the main winding reactance that is X1M which is equals to X2 dash equals to half of Xc. Now why it is half of Xc? That thing you can understand from the lecture of equivalent circuit of single phase induction motor. Now half of Xc value we have put it. And we have calculated the value of main winding reactance that is 5.73 ohm. Now 1.5 ohm of main winding or stator main winding resistance is given. So again we can calculate the equivalent resistance value which is equal to main winding resistance plus R2 dash. Now we have calculated the resist equivalent resistance 4.99 and we also know the value of main winding resistance so definitely we can easily calculate the value of R2 dash which is 3.49 ohm here. So from block protection that means we have calculated equivalent resistance then equivalent reactance main winding reactance and also the value of R2 dash the rotor side resistance value. Next we will calculate the no log test paper where P0 is the no load voltage or voltmeter reading we are getting from no load test that is 220 volt. Then I0 is the no load current. That means the ammeter reading we are getting from no load test that is 4.6 ampere. And the watt meter reading at no load condition that is 125 watt. Now putting all those values in the power equation we know that P equals to Vi cos phi. The V value and I value is known to us from both meter reading and ammeter reading. So definitely we can calculate the value of power factor at no load condition. That is cos phi 0 equals to P divided by V0 I0. So it becomes 125 divided by 220 into 4.6. That means the power factor is 0 0.12. Remember that single phase induction motor or any kind of induction motor is lacking in nature because it is based on induction, principle of induction. Definitely, the power factor will be 
always lower in this case. And here we have got it, the power factor value is 0 0.12. That means it's very much lagging and the power factor value is definitely lagging power factor as it is inductive. Now we will calculate the sine phi value just putting the value of phi angle from here if we are doing the cos inverse of 0.1235 we will get the value of phi 0 now putting the value of phi 0 in sine we are getting this sine phi 0 value that is 0 0.9923 so again we will calculate now the value of no load impedance that is z0 by just putting the values of voltmeter and ammeter we are getting that is P0 divided by I0 that is 220 by 4.6 47.83 ohm is the impedance at no load condition. Now again we will calculate the reactance value X0 at no load condition that will be Z0 sine phi 0 which is 47.83 which we have calculated and sine phi 0 value we have also calculated so ultimately the x a value is 47.46 ok so from no load test we are getting first no load power factor then sine phi 0 value and no load impedance value and lateral we are getting the no load reactance value also from no load test. So now we will calculate the second portion of our problem that is pore loss, friction loss and hindage loss. Definitely pore loss, friction loss and hindage loss this is a portion which is captured in output power when the motor is at no load condition and also at no load uh, no load part of single phase induction motor so if we can just subtract the value of no load copper loss from the power input at no load condition definitely the remaining portion which is left that is the core loss, friction loss and windage loss. So think about that matter that in power we are getting core loss, friction loss and windage loss at time of no load condition. Whatever amount of power output we are getting in the watt meter reading, that is basically power input to the motor at no load plus core loss, friction loss, and windage loss. So, if we can just subtract the value of no load copper loss, then the remaining portion which is just left out in case of no load condition power reading, that is just summation of this value score loss, friction loss and windage loss. So here we have just taken the output power reading at no load condition that is P0 minus we are giving the values that is I0 square into R1M plus R2 dash by 4 which is basically the copper loss at no load condition because copper loss means I square R loss. So at no load condition, R becomes the main winding resistance plus the resistance at rotor side. Okay. So definitely total I square R becomes I0 square, which is no load current into R1M plus R2 dash by 4. Definitely R2 dash by 4, this part has been come due to forward field and backward field concept. So putting all these values we are getting that 125 is our power output at no load condition minus 4.6 square that is current at no load condition into 
resistance of main wire is given 1.5. Up to that we have calculated that is 3.49 ohm. And from there we can calculate the total value that is 74.8 is basically our core friction and windage loss. So in that way we can calculate the equivalent circuit parameters from no load test and lock rotor test. And different kinds of problem related to this are very much important as a problem of single phase induction motor and you need to practice those problems from various books like uh, Nagrat Kothari of Electrical Machines and you can also follow the book of J.B. Yukta and uh, definitely I will prefer that you just practice those problems with your own hand and that will be easier for you to understand this kind of problems. So thank you, thank you for listening my lecture.